this love was always meant to be a wild, crazy adventure.
come this night, Lord, to bless you, to praise you, to worship you, to honor you. As we press into you and your love, Lord, you're overwhelming. You overwhelm us, God. Our hope is in you. our faith to yeah. That's right. you know I've had people say before oh don't hope just believe but the truth is we have to have something to hope for and then we can attach our faith to that amen yeah. and I'm telling you tonight I don't know about you but this song is like a declaration to me let hope arise I don't know about you but I'm that when I allow things to rise up in me, to believe greater in God and attach my faith to hope in Him, that I'll not be disappointed. And I, don't, I know that there's areas that I'm hoping for. Yeah. And when I sing a song, I'm not just singing a song, I am confessing and believing that the words that are coming out of my mouth are going to change my life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Come on, let hope arise tonight. The declarations of faith. Yeah. Amen. He is our anchor. Come on. We're not going to waver. Come on. Come on. I, you know, listen, I don't know about you, but but I'm this, in this thing too deep. How about you? <laughs> Come on. You know? and, 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 and there's no going back. The only way we can go is forward in Christ. Hallelujah. We don't look back. Yeah. Yesterday's gone. Yeah. Today's is taking care of itself. God, God's already in our tomorrow. Hallelujah. Jesus. Come on, let's just sing it one more time. Let hope arise. Let hope arise. Yes, Lord. Let hope arise in you. Let hope arise. 
Babylon. You are our hope. You are our hope. Jesus. Hallelujah. Why don't you just turn to somebody tonight and give them a great big hug and tell them you love them. Amen. Before you do that, though, give this worship team an awesome... They just... Amen. Thanks, guys. Thank I think you, I think so you get much. freer every night. Come on. I walked in and Jacob was twirling. And I was like, whoa, Jacob's rocking tonight. I like your outfit, too. And Scotty, we missed you so much last week. Hallelujah. God is faithful. have hope in Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is faithful. Okay, you're one minute up. Praise God. What a great God we serve, amen? I'll tell you, God is faithful and he's true, amen? I love, I love that. Oh, let there be light. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Hey. What do you guys think about the new weeklies? Are you loving them? I love them too. Nate, you are so stinking cool. I love Nate. Heather too. I love Heather too. Where's Heather? There she is. Praise God. Speaking of Nate and um, Heather, I just want to real quick thank you both so much for serving the youth. Amen. I know that. God, come on. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I know that God has released them. And just as Heather tonight was up here in intercessory and, and called them into other areas. And so we're just... Um, we're thankful, though, for what you did so back there. And, you know, I believe that your fruit will remain. Amen? And that God has great things in store as you step out into other areas. Amen? How many of you know that there's times you're in a church and you're in those areas of ministry for a season? Now, I know that there are calls on people's lives for, you know, like, you know, I mean, it's obvious that... Jacob is a worship leader. I mean, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't have other gifts and callings. Amen? And talents. And the truth is, he serves in other areas. Just because we just have one gift, or, or we have one gift that is dominant, doesn't mean that we don't use our other gifts. Amen? And so, I, um, I find it exciting when I see people exploring their gifts. Because so many times, people just allow their gifts to sit there. If they can't use one, they don't use any. And the truth is, God gave you those gifts for a reason. And they're for the body. They're for the lost and dying world that's going to hell. And it's our responsibility to take those gifts and use them for His glory. Amen? And so I love when I see people operating in different gifts. But... I also believe that everybody has gifts, not just certain people. You know, a lot of times you see a certain amount of people in the church doing a lot of the stuff. And the truth is, I think a lot of times that's because they offer, they volunteer, they have a servant's heart, and they step out and they do it. But I also believe a lot of the times it's because people have not recognized or pulled the gifts out of other people. And sometimes, until you step into your gift, you don't even know 
it. Or, or maybe you know it, but because you're not operating in it, you just kind of sit back. I'm telling you, here at Victory at Sarasota, we don't want bench warmers. We want people who are going to take the gifts that God gave them and use them for his glory. Listen, the word so clear says, if you have a gift to encourage, then encourage. If you have a gift to give, then give. If you have the gift of faith, then use your faith. Attach it to somebody else. Don't let it die. Don't let it go dormant and just sit there. You know, not every person is called to the fivefold ministry. We know that. But every person is called to lead somebody to Jesus Christ. And that can be in many ways. And we believe, as pastors, that's our responsibility is to get you to that place to where you're leading people to Jesus Christ. I mean, and, and if you've never led anybody to Jesus, then, oh well, today's a new day and yesterday's gone. You know, I can remember being in church and thinking everybody else was so spiritual and knew what their gifts and their callings were. And I was the only person in there that didn't. And I thought everybody else knew the word better than I did. Everybody else was super spiritual. I was the only one in the back except for the pastor's son stinking cigarettes. You know, I mean... But the truth is, God had a plan for me way back then, even before I knew it. But it took somebody to pull that gift out of me. Somebody believed in me. And somebody took me and said, you know, I can remember it was during a revival meeting. I'm on the front row. I already got prayer. So, you know, as far as I was concerned, it was social time. Y'all look at me like you never thought that before. And so here I am just talking to everybody. People were in from Florida and I'm on the front row just chatting away. And this woman who ended up mentoring me came up to me and said, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just talking. She goes, there's no time for that. There's people back there that need prayer. I was thinking, well, go pray for them. I don't know. <laughs> I never prayed for anybody but the kids. And she said, no, you come with me right now. And not only do I want you to pray for him, I want you to get him filled with the Holy Ghost and get him filled with joy. And I was like, huh? Huh? And she took me back there and took my hands on them and walked me through it. And that was it. From that po point forward, I knew how to pray for people. I knew how to get them filled with the Holy Ghost and filled with joy. I'm telling you, God is not looking for the super, super spiritual He's looking for somebody who will say yes. And do it. And I believe that's our responsibility as pastors. Is to help you do it. To fulfill the calls that are upon your lives. Not to just have you come in here every week and drink. And then leave full and do nothing with it. No. Come on. We're world changers. We are history makers. You know, and some of you are millionaires in the pew. And God's got creative ideals and he's just waiting for you to act on them. I'm telling you, nothing's impossible with God. If he will do it for us, he'll do it for you. And if he'll do it for you, he'll do it for you and he'll do it for you and you and you. He just wants somebody to say yes. Amen? And so, I just want to encourage you to let those dreams that are in you arise. And start dreaming bigger than you've ever dreamed before. Believe bigger than you've ever believed. Don't, don't put God in your box. You know, don't, don't, well, let me just share this with you. And this is really stirred up in me. You know, when um, we were first talking about coming to victory, um, I remember Pastor Tony got this huge revelation. Don't you love when you get revelation? I remember one time about five years into being saved, I was on the front row 
And I got the revelation, by his stripes we're healed. I was so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, it's the stripes on his back that he took. That's why we got healed. And everybody's looking at me and going, okay, that's good. <laughs> but it was a huge revelation to me. And from that moment on, I owned it. Every stripe he took was for any sickness that I'll ever face. Any disease that ever can be named has been paid for by a stripe that he took. Amen? And I tell them how this works. They don't tell me. Amen? Too many people are walking around. I don't want to get off of preaching, but you know. Come on now. Amen? So, Pastor Tony was... Um, you know, one of his very favorite scriptures since I've known him is um, lean not into your own understandings, but in all ways acknowledge him and he will direct your ways. Proverbs 3, 5. Amen. Five, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Right? And so, um, and I've heard him quote that from for th 25 years. I've, I, I, I've known it's one of his favorites. And when we were leaving, he said, man, God really showed me that we're to, not to lean on our own understandings because we don't need to know the plan. We don't have to figure the beginning and the end and the middle out. All we have to do is trust him and believe in what he says is true and then he's going to take care of it. Amen? And so, you know, a couple years ago, it'll be, it was a year ago, it'll be two years this spring, well, yeah. right. My, my mom passed away. And, um, you know, she, she fought the good fight. And she was in the hospital for a couple months. And there was times I just didn't believe was her time. But I was, I just didn't, sometimes I just didn't know how to pray. Because I had every, I, I wasn't just fighting the enemy. I was fighting family too, honestly. And all the other's words and reports from the doctors that were being spoken against her. And so, <clears throat> this one night we got there, and God is so good. It was the night that she rededicated her life. And um, I, I knew she wasn't ready to go because she made it very clear, even though she had a, a ventilator and um, on, you know, I asked her if she was afraid because everybody was there, and she shook her head yes, and I said, why, Mom? Is it because you think they think you're dying tonight? And she shook her head yes. I said, I, I have no idea why they all came tonight. Where were they last week when I was here all by myself? Somebody's buying my dinner tonight, and she just started to laugh, you know? But that night, you know, we reaffirmed her salvation because she wanted to. And, um, and then that night we stayed at the hospital and they gave us a room. And I had a book on miracles. And I was reading it that night and God really spoke to me because I said, God, I don't know how to pray. They had taken us into a room and they had pretty much every member of my family had agreed that if she didn't, that we needed to pretty much let her go and administrate drugs that she would, you know, pretty much take the vent out and then let her go and then if she struggled they would give her drugs. And I just, I mean, I just, I didn't have a peace with that at all. And uh, so that night I was reading this book and I just want to read you because this morning, really early in the morning I got up and God reminded me of this. and. I was like, God, you're so good. And I don't know who this is for tonight, but I want to share this with you. I, I, I took it out of the book and I put it on my iPad and every chance I had, I'd put it before my face. And I put it in her room. And I said, you know, God is an awesome God who has the power to heal and make whole. And you know, that right there can be changed to anything. He has the power to sell houses. He has the power to bring children home. It can be anything you're believing for. So you just leave that blank. I'll leave that blank and you fill that in. And it says nothing is too hard for God. He knows how to do whatever it is we need done. He is a God of creative power and has the ability to do things outside of our human thinking. Come on, you got to get a hold of that. 
God doesn't think like we think. Because he doesn't look through the eyes we're looking through. He looks through the eyes of faith and his father and never doubts. There's no doubt in Jesus. Because he knows everything that he says will come to pass. I believe that's the place we have to get in our lives. To think like Jesus thought. That if his father said it, it is so. Amen? We have to move out of our head knowledge and move into the supernatural. By believing, expecting, contending, and confessing the truth, which is God's word. God's power has not changed. So we choose, and this is what I put in my heart. We choose to believe. We choose to have faith. We choose to contend for a miracle. Whatever you're believing for, you choose to contend for that miracle. And don't let go. No matter what anybody says or what anybody believes, it doesn't matter. Our God is bigger and he is still in the miracle business. Amen? We choose to leave the results to God. That so ministered to me. Because I don't know about you, but, you know, I, I think if it doesn't go just the way I said, then, you know, I missed it. Or it didn't come to pass. But that's not our God. His ways are higher than ours. And we choose the results, to leave the results to God. Our job is to believe and trust God. Amen. And I just want to encourage you tonight, no matter what it is, Choose to believe and trust God. Don't let anything else sway you. Don't let a report, a doctor's word. First of all, I, I, am, I believe in the medical profession, but I also believe they're just practicing. And Jesus is the great physician. Amen. And he can turn anything around. Amen. And so... We said, we choose to believe in miracles. We choose to believe, God, that your word is true. We choose to have faith in God for my mom's miracle. We choose to expect, and we choose to contend for her miracle. And then we trust and leave it in your hands. Amen? You know, whether the miracle came the way I thought it or not is not up to me. My job is to choose to believe and trust in him. Amen. And I just want to encourage you tonight that don't, don't be moved by this way things go. You know, um, we made a confession and we've been speaking by faith that our house would sell by the end of January. And Darlene and George's. And we started adding anybody else's in the church who was believing for their home to sell or for a home to move into. We started believing for it. Leroy and Maria got a bid on their house. Amen? Not the one here. They're not moving. Everybody start freaking out. They're not leaving. But they're one in North Carolina. So, you know, yesterday, I just had in my spirit, God, I'm not being shaken. I know it's the 31st, and I'm not shaken. There was people who called and wanted to go into our house on the third, on the 30th. And it's really bad weather up there right now. And they're playing. They were flying in. And they got moved back and moved back and moved back. And they couldn't get in. And so the lady called me and said, they just can't go tonight. Can they go, can they go tomorrow? We said, sure, that's fine. That was yesterday. They went in there yesterday. And we were so busy yesterday with so much going on that I didn't have any time to look at my emails. I didn't have a chance to look, and I just didn't know. On the way home last night, we were up in, in um, Sarasota and went and hung out with a Robin and Rusty. It was late when we left, and we got home really late. And when we were coming back, I looked at my emails, and there was an email in there. And they said, the people love your home. The people think it's absolutely beautiful. They are in the midst of negotiating a job. And if that job goes through, they want to write a contract on your home. Come on. Amen. 
let me tell you something. In the natural, I could say, well, it didn't sell. But let me tell you something. In the spirit realm, in the supernatural, my house is whole, sold, and they're the buyers. Amen? They just, they may not know it yet, but God does. Amen? Because I choose to trust and believe in God. Amen? And then, today, George and Darlene, somebody came down there, and there's two, there's two houses they're contending for, and by faith, we call it theirs that they choose. Amen? Come on. This is the year of the greater. Amen? We have not seen anything yet. Get ready. Turn to your neighbor and tell him to get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it is exciting. We live in an exciting times. I wanted to share that with you. I know it was a little bit and took a few minutes, but I just, you know, sometimes God speaks. And I, I think, you know, that it's not just for me. That it's for you too, to build your faith. Amen? I mean, we want to be water walkers. Amen? I want to be the one that if Jesus calls, I jump out. Amen? Praise God. I'm believing though that I'm not going to sink. That I'm just going to keep walking. Amen? Well, we welcome you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you so much for joining us. Do we have any first-time visitors here at Victory at Sarasota? Any at all? Praise God. Well, then we're, oh, we do. Hallelujah. Praise God. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, I don't, you, you don't know this, but uh, Pastor Tony and I are the new pastors here at Victory. We've only been pastoring now. Is this our third week? Yeah, I think so. So sometimes we'll see people and we don't know they're new. Or there's been some people I've walked to and said, thank you so much for coming tonight. And they'll be like, I've been coming here for six years. I was like, okay. I'm get, we're going to get together real soon. <laughs> And the truth is, that is Pastor Tony and my goal, is that we do get together with you. We've been trying. In fact, you know, we got to just go have coffee because I have been eating so much. <laughs> we've been trying to get together with everybody and we've been going and having meals. And a lot of times they're after service, so it's late. And then we all go home and go straight to sleep. It's bad. I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> So we welcome you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We pray tonight that not only do you sense his presence, but you feel his love. Amen. Thank you for coming. Um, ushers, if you just prepare yourselves for the offering, I just want to give you a couple real quick announcements. Um, did you guys, isn't this so cool? I love it. Love it. I mean, that could be the front. That's how cool it is. I really think so. Don't you guys agree? I, I, the year of the greater? Oh, how about a new ministry is launched here at Victory? Amen? Anchored. That is such a cool name, Anchored. It's a young adults ministry, and their first meeting is at Venice Beach on the 28th of February. Amen? And there's a hashtag there, hook up with them. Come be blessed. Dr. Leon will be with us on the 15th. Those of you who don't know who Dr. Leon is, he is our spiritual father. We have learned so much from this man that it is life-changing. Amen? Uh, because of him, we, we believe that we walk in... That we, a lot of who we are is because of what he's taught us. Amen? Over the years. And then Kurt Bennett will be with us on Tuesday the 25th. Um, Women of Destiny, Donna, come on, Women's Ministry, is hosting um, our first back a 2014 women's meeting, which is on a Friday night. It's going to be held at Homewood Suites, and you're just going to come, and we're going to have some snacks, and we're going to fellowship, and you're going to get to know Christina and I. Amen? Bring a friend. You know, can I just tell you this? It wouldn't be a meeting if I was there without food. <laughs> And some part of the word. So, you know, there will be the word because 
It's just who we are, amen? And then healing rooms. Please, if you know anybody who needs to visit the healing rooms, the healing rooms are here with George and Darlene. They oversee them, but they're not the only ones. They have two to three healing rooms every Tuesday to thir every Thursday night from 6.30 to 8.30 here. Amen? And then treasure hunting. Sky, when's it start? 7 o'clock on the 2nd the 4th Friday every month, and they meet here, right? Hallelujah. Any, everybody aware, know what treasure hunting is? Okay. No. Okay, so treasure, you want to share, Sky, what treasure hunting is? Come on. Sky, Sky, Sky. Woo, 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 woo. Okay, so um, treasure hunting is um, a form of evangelism where um, we basically ask the Holy Spirit to um, give us clues um, to the person that we're to minister to. So, um, yeah, so basically what we do is get together and, um, and we just say, we have a short time of prayer and we say, you know, Holy Spirit, please just um, give, us, give us a clue to who we're supposed to minister to tonight. And we go out in groups of... Um, two and three and sometimes even more and um, um, so for instance you would, you might have like um, red shirt or um, you know black hat something like that and then you see that and um, you see when you're out and um, it's it's really amazing how God will lead you to someone and you really that person is um, they really feel like they're a treasure because you're like Come on. <laughs> I'm really nervous right now <laughs> Our first treasure hunt that um, one of the first ones that we went on, um, it was a it was with um, Ian and Sarah um, Gordon, and um, it was it was kind of like treasure hunting for dummies, and um, it was it was just it, and we we went out you know the, one of the clues on there was a steeple, um, one of them was uh, Starbucks, and um, you know we all you know you put all your um, your maps together and you see kind of like where it's taking you that's how you split up a lot of times like people have similar clues so on this one we all stayed together because we all had similar clues so we're like okay you know we're new to this and um so we f went downtown because we thought there's a lot of churches down there and um so we went downtown you know then there's a starbucks right there went to the starbucks didn't see any treasure or anything like that um Someone else had, I think, boats, so we journeyed down to um, St. Armand's. I'm not St. Armand's, I'm Marina Jack's. And um, so when we cross over um, from like the downtown area over to Marina Jack's, the first thing we find there is a piece of artwork, which is just a steeple. That's what it is. And we're like, wow, that's amazing. So we're on the right path, you know? And so we're going down and uh, we're going around, and I had on my, my map, I had funnel. And I was, you know, when you're new at this, you're trying to think like, is that God, you know? I just had peanut on, you know, coming to my head. Is that God? And so you're like, you're like I don't think so. So one of, the, one of the number one rules in, you know, when you're writing down your map is you don't try to rationalize things. You don't try to, you know, use logic. Um, and so I had funnels, and I was like, what is that? Some guy broken down using a funnel with oil in his car. You know, what is that? Anyway, so we're walking around where the boats are, and um, there are literally funnels on every rope tied to the boats because what they do is it keeps the rats from um, climbing onto the boats. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know? So we're following that around, and I think uh, Faith Highfield had, um, like, something like Black Pearl. We round the bend, and there is a boat that says Black Pearl or something like that. I'm like, you know, and then so we're on, we're at, <laughs> we're on Marina Jacks, you know, where it comes out and where the dolphins are. We're rounding right here, and there's a lady sitting on a bench, and she's just gazing out into, you know, 
oblivion and she's just like looking for an answer you can tell she's just and everybody knew that that was our treasure you know and like so the women were able to talk to her but that was just one of the first ones normally I mean we normally run to many people but um, that was one of the first ones very memorable and um, yeah so that's kind of like what it is um, yeah I hope I didn't do too bad so <laughs> Thanks, Guy. And uh, if you do come out, it's um, in the prayer room portable. It's the second portable over here. So, so I'm call. Thanks. I thought, oh my gosh, this guy's got to preach on. He wants the mic back again. <laughs> Come on. Thanks, Guy. You know, I don't know about you, but whenever I'm going through something in my life and I'm dealing with something, nothing excites me more than to go and minister to somebody else. You know what happens? We get our eyes off of ourselves. And we get our eyes on something, somebody else. And then all of a sudden, our problems get smaller and smaller and smaller. You know, when you're just sitting, when it's just you, us four and this, you know, these four walls and us, things just stay focused on you. But when you start looking out and reaching out, things change. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, so, so that's exciting. And then, how many of you were here Tuesday night? <laughs> Shoot, the house was almost as full Tuesday night as it is tonight. Tuesday night, Alyssa ministered. Um, it was exciting, wasn't it? You know, it's exciting when somebody is young and on fire for God and doesn't just sit and stay in their pew and goes and does something for Jesus. And you know, I believe it's our responsibility to allow them to share it. Because somebody else is going to hear what she did and it's going to encourage them to go do it. You know, I can remember the first time everybody went on the streets. I was like, oh, oh, I'm not going on the streets. I'm not going and talking to anybody. I remember Pastor Tony and all my kids went, and I'd be like, I'm going to stay back at the church. <laughs> it was a Wednesday night, and everybody went and did street ministry, and I, but let me tell you something. Somebody steps out, it encourages other people to step out. Amen? It was a great testimony she shared with us. Thank you so much for coming, those of you who came. Listen. I know that was a longer night because we had altar ministry. But our goal on Tuesday nights is really to finish the word by 8.15, wrap it up, and have you walking out those doors by 8.30. So don't feel like if you come on a Tuesday night that, you know, you're not going to get out of here till 9.30 or 10. Because that's just not the case. Amen? We want to, we want Tuesday nights to be a time where you really get some solid teachings. Amen? And so, um, I, I just want to um, thank all of you for that. Um, also, the social media. Thank you so much. We had a great uh, response to these. If you did not receive a social media sheet, if you lift your hands, the ushers will give you one. And it's for you to just, us to keep in contact with you. You can tell us what social media you use. You know, this is 2014. And... If you're not into social media, you need to get into it. Amen? Because it's a way of communicating. It, you know, if you want to give us your information, you can. If you just want to tell us, we're kind of trying to get a feel on what people use the most. Amen? So we appreciate that. Have I received the offering? No. Okay. Have the ushers, they used to always, I used to always forget the offering. Especially like when we do outreach. Have the ushers passed out envelopes? No. Okay, ushers. While you're doing that, there you go. They're already on it, passing out envelopes. Amen? Um, if you would like to fill out your visitor's card and drop it in the offering envelope, we'd appreciate that. Um, we won't call and bug you. We'll just show up at your door tomorrow. No, just kidding. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> oh my goodness. God is so
so good. Are you guys ready to give tonight? I don't know about you, but I love joy. I love to laugh. Amen. I love to have fun. I hate when I'm ugly. <laughs> I don't want to hear any amens from my kids. <laughs> but it's so good to laugh, you know, and to rejoice. Um, I'm just looking over at Leroy and Marie, and before we receive our offering, I just, just want to tell you what a gift you are. You are truly a gift to Pastor Tony and I, but not just to us. I believe you're a gift to everyone you touch that God knows who he can trust with people's lives. And I believe that he trusts you too, completely. And um, you're, you're just fun to be with. You're a blessing. I know you're a blessing to that gentleman's family. And I just speak that God will continue to use you, that he will continue to strengthen you, that he will fill you with supernatural peace and strength beyond anything you can ever begin to imagine. That when you're weak and tired and weary, he will renew you by the innovation of his strength. And that you will always, always laugh. Amen. I thank you for being who you are and for what you've done. Amen. And for ministering to people that not everybody would take the time to love on. It's a truly a gift. And I want you to know that you are a gift. Amen? We love you. Praise God. Are you guys ready to give? Father, we just thank you tonight that the greatest gift of all is your son. Lord, we consider it a privilege and an honor to be able to give into advancing his name. As we give tonight, Lord, we don't give to build anything but your church and your name and who you are. My prayer tonight is, Lord, is that our offerings will be used and our ties to bring people closer to Christ. Whether it's through buying a building or feeding the lost are paying rent, whatever it is, God. Use these tithes and offerings for your glory. Let them not return void. May they go forth to accomplish all that you called them to in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray, God, right now that every giver here receives an increase in their lives. That you are pushing back the lack in their homes and in their finances. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody that agrees says, God bless you as you give. We call this offering blessed in Jesus' name. How many of you are ready for the anointed word? Amen? Are you ready, Pastor Tony? Come on up. Let's give Pastor Tony a hand. You want me to stay? Thanks, Thank Scotty. you, Scotty. Appreciate Scotty got a haircut. Looks good. Hallelujah. Who's over there snorting, Marilyn? Could you help me with I can help you down, yes. Then I can help you back up. How about, do I, I have some gentlemen that could maybe take this podium and put it down on the ground for the... There's Terry. Thank you, guys. A lighter one's coming. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I just like to get down here, down with the people. Hallelujah. So good to, to see Georgian's mother. She's here. Hallelujah. We didn't. Come up. Yeah. Oh, you're so welcome. God bless you. God bless you. You, you want to greet the people? Yeah. Come here. Come here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hey, 
here. I'm so happy to be again here. Yeah. And uh, that is my real, my blessing. And I'm so happy to see you. And again to bless you. Come on! Because this new year I wish to, to tell to you could be very, very happy new year. Yeah. And that is very special for everyone yes. to know to doesn't lose the focus to Jesus. And that make us very strong. Read in the Philippines chapter 4 13 verse that with, with Jesus we are very very strong Come on. Amen. and don't forget this I don't like it to see you like Peter when he see God uh, Jesus walk in the water and he what she, he tell Jesus I want to walk like you he said, okay, come. And Peter started to walk, but in one minute he for, lose the focus in starting to bow down. That I don't like it to, for come you. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Because that is very important. Don't lose the focus to Jesus. <laughs> Amen. 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 That's a good word. Bless you, bless you much. You are so special for me because you love my son. I understand that. And I'm, you make me so proud with him. That is only one child for me, but I'm so thankful to God to give me just like this child. Amen. Amen. And uh, I wish you to be healthy. Amen. Don't, don't forget, God make us healthy. Come on. That is very important to know everybody that God make us healthy. Come on. And that is very special because the people Forget it this sometime. They say, oh God, who are you make with me? But he make us healthy. Amen. Only our fault make us to need to help somebody. The doctors and etc. they don't know nothing. <laughs> yes. That is my, my experience. <laughs> Them. And uh, that's very important to know that God make us healthy. Yes. Only yes. our fault make trouble to us. Nothing more. But doctor doesn't understand that. <laughs> no. Many time I understand that. And uh, one time I go by broke my hand and they put me some sheena here gips and one time I have pain I go by doctor come on take it this I have pain second time they make again and again I have pain and then on the third time I go and again I have pain and they put me and I say, God, I am believer Come on. or not. Come on. And I say, take this, and, um, but that's too early. No, I don't like it, your advice. 
I have somebody else to give me advice. Take it, this. And at last he take. And that was the, the story finished. No more pain. <laughs> If you believe with the, all your heart to Jesus, and if you have Jesus in your heart, no problems, no problems. Believe me, I am 87 years old. Mm -hmm. I never lie, and I tell you the truth in my experience. Amen. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much I for sharing. Thank you. I thank you. Bless you. Oh, thank you. I am happy to be here. No, we're so glad that you've come and, and uh it was it was it was ten years ago, over ten years ago that, that uh <laughs> we we went over to uh, Bulgaria and she cooked us dinner in her home and uh and uh you know we, we had a lovely time. Oh, it was yes. great and, and we love your son Georgian. I know. We we, 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 we miss him and we'll I'm sure we'll see him sometime this year. So tell him about our Thank her you. secret sauce. Oh, the secret sauce, yeah. Oh, well, yes. Georgian has a, a secret sauce that, that he loves that his mother makes. You know, every, every son has something that their mother makes that is good, huh? Uh, yeah. See? See what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, so she says, you got you to gotta take this back with you. And I'm like, you know. It was, I'm, like it was in a jar. Jelly jar. It was, in a, it, was, it, was in, it was in a jelly jar, and we're like, sure, we'll, we'll take that back. Well, we 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 bought some uh, souvenirs for the children. Uh, one of them was this this wooden snake. It it uh, it was long. It was about it rolled up, and it was made of little pieces of wood, and it was connected together, and it moved like a snake. So we get all the way back to the states, and 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 and, and we get our, our bags checked in, and they they say, did you bring any food from Bulgaria? They stop us in customs. And they stop us in the customs. They said, did you bring any food? Well, I'm like, oh my goodness. Goodness, this is not going to be good. They said, "Did you bring some meat back?" And we're like, "No." First, they just kept saying food. We're like, "Food, it's food." Georgian mom sauce. We're going to get busted. <laughs> so they, they thought it was sausage, and then they pulled it out, and it's the wooden snake. But we were able to get the get get your special sauce yeah, to your son. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hand, yeah, we love you. We love you. Out here. Thank you. Come on. She's a strong woman. <laughs> Praise God. 87. That's Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Um, we, we did forget one announcement, and this is, this is something that uh, just happened yesterday, and so we, we need some prayer about this, too. Um, uh, are, are you all familiar with John Mark McMillan? John Mark has just put out a new album, and he's, he's starting a tour, and uh, he's starting the tour in Orlando. Uh, the, uh, the young adults, which is coming up soon, wanted to get together and go to Orlando, but it happened to be on a Saturday night. Uh, my son, uh, Tony, and I went up to Chicago a couple years back, and we saw him. And I, I've met John uh, Mark before. Uh, just, a, just a wonderful young man that's doing some awesome things for God. And if you enjoy his music, you know, you'll, you'll really, you know, appreciate what we're, we're doing right now. Because we got a hold of him. Terry got a hold of their, their agent and said, hey, man, we'd like John Mark to come down here to Sarasota. And they're like, you get a venue, and, and we'll have him. He'll come. March 31st, on a Monday, um, and, and so we, we, we need to be praying for, for a venue that, that we can have that will, will hold him, okay? It has to be 500 to 1,000 people. Okay, and, and then this Monday we're going to go and, and try to uh, seek that out. So just, you know, in your prayers, uh, if, if you love him and love his uh, ministry, uh, I mean, he, he's, a, he's a great young man, he's got some awesome stuff, and um, we, we'd love to have him here in Sarasota, wouldn't we? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So just keep that in your prayers. Take your Bibles tonight, if you would, please, and turn to the book of 2 Corinthians. It's the second letter that the Apostle Paul writes. Hallelujah. Everybody doing okay? Yeah. All right. You know, <laughs> this is, you know... 
Can I just tell you something? I have to be honest with you. Um, so you know what you're getting into. Years ago when we first started the church, we really wrestled with God because we didn't really want to start a church. But we knew God had a call upon our lives and we, we started an outreach. And the outreach very quickly became a church. And I won't go into that story. But in our, in our wrestling with, with God and the very fact that we didn't really want to be pastors and we didn't want to start a church and so on and so forth, um, we, we, we kind of... Um, you know how you can get before God and you can kind of, you think that you can put some stipulations on him. And you know what I'm saying? So our stipulation was this. We, we just don't want to be a church like a normal church. Okay? We want to be a regular church. You know, the regimented, legalistic, um, religion, stricken, bound up church. Are you familiar with that one? Okay, we didn't want to be that one, all right? So we prayed, Lord, we just want to be like, like a church out of the box. We don't want to be normal. Nothing normal about, about our church. So we started this, this church in this little office building that we had. And it wasn't any, any bigger than, uh, it was about as big as the platform, but really narrow. In fact, the ceilings were low and people tried to flag in there and were poking out ceiling tiles and everything else. And, um, but in, in that, we... Um, started it with, with some cleaning ladies that we were able to lead to the Lord, you know. Um, that, that was our, our big start. We had cleaning ladies. And they would come and, and they would uh, um, come and they would bring a different boyfriend every week. And uh, when they would bring a different boyfriend every week, God would get a hold of them and they would get saved and set free and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Then about three weeks later, then we'd say, hey, where's Jimmy? Oh, Jimmy had a warrant out for his arrest and uh, he's in the county jail. And I'd say, well, praise God, hallelujah, he's saved, man. He's filled with the Holy Ghost. So he's probably doing some ministry in there, don't you think? You know, isn't that how God works? And, uh, but in that, here I am playing the guitar, and I'm thinking, yeah, this is awesome, God. I don't want church as normal. And all of a sudden, I look up, and there's kids in there throwing chips across the room, and things are flinging back and forth. I'm like, wow, this really isn't normal, God. <laughs> there's nothing about this that is normal, you know? And he said, well, that's what you asked for, right? All I'm saying is this, and I just, I just, we are not here to regiment what we call church. We want to allow God to flow. Amen? And, and, and so, you, you'll see some tendencies, some things maybe that are a little bit different. Just hang on. It'll change next week. I know, I know we said we won't change anything for six months, right? We've thrown that out the door, man. We just, we're going we're, we're gonna to change everything every week, man. Hallelujah. Somebody said, wow, man, I wouldn't, if I would have known that, if you weren't going to change anything, I wouldn't be sticking around anyway. I'm like, okay, all right, we'll change it. <laughs> Are you with me in uh, 2 Corinthians? Yes. In chapter 10, I'm going to read, starting at verse 3, and I'm going to read the New Living Translation. At verse 3, it says, we are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy the false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, as we go before your word tonight, Lord, I'd ask that you'd give us revelation. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear what your spirit is saying to us tonight, Father. Father, use me as a vessel. Father, give me the one word that would change a person's heart, Lord. The one word that they need to, to, to change their, their life, Lord. If, if they're going through struggles, Lord, let it be that one word that would, would change them. Father, because as we come in here tonight, Lord, we don't want to leave the same way. We want to leave different. We want to be full of you, anointed with your spirit to go forth and do the work that you've called us to do. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I, I began to, to look at the scripture and, and I began to see that, listen, and realize that we all have struggles, don't we? So I began to title this message, 
You know, um, winning the battle. Winning the battle of what these thoughts try to come against you. And I thought, you know, really the truth is that it, it, that's a great, great title. But you know what? The truth is we've already won the battle. Jesus has already defeated those things and all we have to do is stand up in that faith and walk it out, okay? The thoughts will come, but we have the strength to get through it, don't we? Say this with me. I have the strength. I have the knowledge through the Word of God to cast down every argument that tries to acknowledge itself against the knowledge of God in me, in Jesus' name. Amen. See, that's where it is. It's, it's the, 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 there's a battle going on. There is. But the battle's here. The battle's here. The battle's in our, the way that we think. Yeah. And we know that if we're born again, then our spirit man is renewed. Boosh. Come on. Jesus, come into my heart. Boom. There it is. Right there. Then you're renewed. You're, you're, that old you is gone. Listen, there, there's no old you in you. In your spirit, man. It's totally clean. It's been renewed. Hallelujah. Amen. But the problem is that we, we have these minds. See, we're made of three, three parts, right? Spirit, soul, and body. Spirit being our heart. That's the, the part that got renewed. Our hearts got changed. I know it did because my heart was hard. Jesus came into my life, my heart began to get soft and it was pliable and, and he could use it. You know what I mean? But then after that, I realized that, that I had a soul which was my mind, the way that I think. And you know, we, some of us have been raised in certain ways that, that, that we've got these theories. And we try to carry them in, in, into our Christianity life. But can I tell you what, they don't work that way because this mind has to be renewed. And then, we, of course, we have a body. Our body, I just tell my body, has got to line up with my spirit, man. Amen? So that I got to put the pie down. I got to do all this stuff. But, you know. But, but, but the truth is, we, we have control over our bodies, right? Because our spirit man is larger than our body. Amen? So as you look at this passage that, that Paul writes, and of course I read it out of a paraphrase. I, I love the New Living Translation because it, it gives me a little better at, uh, uh, a feeling of how God wants us to see this thing. The mind really is the control center of our life. The mind is the control center of our life. It's like control center, you know, NASA, whatever. I mean, it's where all of this stuff comes in. And it determines our destiny. Come on. It determines our destiny. Now, we can get up here and, and, and prophesy over you, speak over your lives, that you're world changers and history makers, which you are because that's how God's created you. But your thought life is going to try to tell you that you're not that person. Because you're either hanging around the wrong people, you're listening to the wrong things, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. That's not where you want to be. You want to be around people of faith. Hallelujah. You want to hear faith. You want to hear what God, how he's created you. You are a world changer and history maker. We'll say this till, till, till the end of time because that's what God has created you to be. And, and your world may not be the entire world, obviously, but your world is where you are right now. You can change the sphere of, of what's going on around you, in your workplace, in your home. It starts in the home, by the way. You want revival? Well, pray for revival in your house. Hallelujah. See, we, we do this by taking our old way of thinking, our old thoughts, and aligning them up with God's Word. The thoughts that, that, that we've always thought that, that I'm not good enough, I'm not educated enough, I'm not this enough, I'm not that enough. You know, I, I, I love Georgian's mom because I love Georgia and I, I love her, but I, I, I know the testimony of that, of that man and where he came from and where he is today. And, and there was nothing in, in that past of his that would have said, I can do 
what I'm doing today. Do you understand what I'm saying? And there's nothing probably in your past that will tell you that you could do what you're going to do today or tomorrow. Hallelujah. Because what God has planned for you is greater and bigger than you can even think. <laughs> because we tend to think a little bit small. But as we, we begin to renew our minds, we begin to think bigger. Because we begin to act like God acts. That's the whole point right there. We begin to act like God acts. We begin to speak like God speaks. We begin to come God-like. Wow. You know, some of you heard my testimony. I just splattered out here and there. But you know what? There was a period of my life from the age of 14 to 25 that I wasn't serving God. Now, I didn't, be, I, I didn't doubt that Jesus was the Son of God. I just chose not to serve Him. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. There's some people that, that may have never accepted Him, and they don't know the truth. I knew the truth and just denied the truth. Well, how's that possible? Well, it was my choice. I chose not to. But in that, that choosing, my mother continually prayed for me over every day. I mean, whoo. Even to the point where it became like, really? Come on. Oh, we all want our freedom, don't we? We all want to be our own person. Listen, God wants you to be your own person too, but you got to follow him. And he's going to lead you and he's going to direct you in the way you need to go. And I began to, to realize that, you know, whenever I'd get in trouble, I'd certainly call upon God. <laughs> and can I tell you what? He was always there. He'd always pull me out of whatever I was into. But my mom did some really unique things. She took a picture of me one time behind the pulpit and blew it up real big, you know. And it's like, whoa. I said, what's that about? And she said, well, that's my preacher, my son, my preacher. I was like, what? Are you kidding me? You know, I mean, I was standing behind the pulpit and I had a suit on. I was at, at my, one of my sister's graduations. And I come home and I was, we were living in, in Kansas City at the time. And it was this big on the wall. Picture me. <laughs> I mean, I'm not talking a little. It was that big. And she goes, that's my son, the preacher. I'm like, yeah, whatever. You know what I mean? But you know what? She didn't, she didn't waver. She didn't. She, but you know what that began to do? Began to renew my mind because I always thought, you know, wow, what, what if? And, and even, even my wife said, you know, we were sitting around at one time and sitting around and, and the whole family was there. And, you know, somebody said, would, would you marry a preacher? And, and, and she said, oh, no, I wouldn't marry a preacher. And I said, good. I, I, you know, I'm not going to be a preacher, you know. I'm going to be a millionaire, blah, 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 or whatever. Listen, God has a plan for your life. It may not be a preacher, but I'm going to tell you what. He's called you to go out and do what he's called you to do. He's called you to go and, and minister to the lost. He's called you to go and minister to your co-workers. But we can't do it unless our mind's renewed. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as, For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Can I tell you what? You are a product of... Of your thoughts. What you think on. What you think about. Is what you will be. Have you ever been around somebody that really enjoys something? Um, do we have any NASCAR fans in here? Two. Well I guess you cross a certain line down south and that's it man. That's... <laughs> I will hit a vein when I find out what you guys really do like to do. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on that. Um, Lord help me. Hallelujah. Uh, but anyway, I'm not a big NASCAR fan either. But I am, like in February, because football's over. And we... we <laughs> it was my default. And it was only because of my default, because we would do Sunday services, and I'd come home, and, you know, after, after lunch, and so on and so forth, and I'd always love to watch football, because you'd get, you'd get two games, so you'd see the first, of the, uh, the first one, and then you'd see the last of the last one, and in between, you'd have a nice nap, you know what I mean? Well, 
NASCAR was, was really kind of cool too because you'd go in and it'd be lap 500 and, you know, or lap uh, uh, two of 500 or whatever. You're like, oh my gosh, you know. And all of a sudden you'd fall asleep and you'd wake up, 10 laps to go. You're like, glory to God, hallelujah. <laughs> But I noticed with NASCAR fans that the ones that, that, that are really into it, they know everything about it. Do you understand what I'm saying? They know who won this year, what's going on in the, in the cup, what's, you know, what kind of car they drive, who's traded into what camp, what number they... Do you understand what I'm saying? They know. They have renewed their minds to NASCAR. <laughs> Now, there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay. The hobby sports, that's good, you know. But the truth is, that's what we need to do with the Word of God in our lives, is renew our minds to the Word of God. So now, listen, we, we know exactly who we are. Come on. Come on. We know exactly what God's called us to be. We know exactly how He thinks about us. We, we sang a couple songs tonight about love. Uh, you know, and I, I appreciate that Daryl Evans song. I haven't heard that in a long time. Um, extra, well, my love is extravagant or whatever the title of it is. But, you know, it's like, man, that's our God. He's got an extravagant love for us. But if we don't renew our minds, then we never have that understanding of what it really is about. So the process of renewing our minds is vital to a believer. Say this. The process of renewing your mind is vital to me in believing the right things and doing the right things and acting the right way in Jesus' name. I mean, that's what it is. We hear this, it gets in our head, and then it begins to drop into our hearts. But the problem is, if we don't get the right things in here, then the wrong things drop into here. See, because it says, for as he thinks in his heart, so he is. You are what you continually think upon. You can change your life by changing your mindset. Come on, come on. You want your life changed? Begin to think differently. Yeah, come on. Begin to think that you're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. You know? And it doesn't hurt to continue to say it. You might not think it right away. There's a difference between head faith and heart faith. Amen? The head faith is like a natural faith. I have faith that, that if I go out there and stick my key in my truck, it'll start up. You know? Because it, it always, it has. You know, and it's got a good battery. That's, that's just natural head faith. But there's a heart faith that God wants us to operate out of. And that is saying, you know, I really don't see it. But I do believe it because your word says it's true. And that's where we need to be in our lives. Even though we don't see it, even though we don't see our son and daughter saved, even though we know that this is the year of the greater and they're coming in. Amen. Oh, come on. Let me See, people ought to get really excited about that because that's the most important thing on God's heart. Yeah is your loved ones getting saved. The most important thing on God's heart is your friends getting saved. The most important thing on God's heart is this world accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. There's nothing more, there's nothing more important, is there? No. You've lived 87 years, there's nothing more important. That is the most important thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, there's nothing. And, and, and sometimes we can get lulled to sleep. In church, <laughs> in, in places of just being complacent. I'm going to tell you what, folks, the most important thing to God is souls. Amen. When God gave us our business, he said, he said to me, I, I had been in business before, and, and I, I took business serious, and, and God had given us a business. I wanted to be a good steward of that business. And I thought I was doing everything right, and it was, it was becoming more successful, more successful. But I'd have people sit down with me. And what I, I look back now and I didn't even realize at the time. But what was happening was I was pastoring people. But I was busy. You know what I'm saying? And I'm thinking, man, i got this work to do. And this, this guy wants to knock on my door. And, you know, they'd come in. I, I always, I, this term really kind of cranks me a little bit. I don't, I'm not really into it. But I, I just want to pick your brain. And get your finger out of my brain. <laughs> you know something? <laughs> you know what I mean? 
you ain't touching my brain. But they'd want to sit down and they just want to talk. And I'd be like, oh my, you know, I'd be like, okay, okay. I'd be like, I need to get my work done. Come on, Donnie, you know what I'm talking about. You know, I got this to do. I got that to do. And, and God arrested me and said, do you think that's why I gave you the business? So you could get all your little worky things done that you needed done? He said, no, the most important thing is these people that are sitting before you. They need to hear about my son Jesus. They need to have an understanding of what he's done for them. And if it's not you, who's going to tell them? Whew, I began to straighten up my attitude. I began to open up my door and, and begin to allow people to come in. We, we saw salvation after salvation. People being delivered, set free. Little uh, families that would, that would have a, a child in um, a situation where a child was, was, uh, had to be out of the home, couldn't live in the home, had to go to another school because this child, this, this young student was beating up the teacher. And I, and I, and I had just met this person and God had told me to hire him and, and they're, they're bringing all this on me and we just began to pray and break that, 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 that spirit that was upon that child. Now I didn't know, I'm thinking this is like a, some big kid, you know, beating up teachers, trying to find this, this kid's only about this big, little, little, little kid just full of demonic activity in his life, you know, and, and I'm going to tell you what, God broke that off. That family got saved and set free. Hallelujah. Changed. And they're still serving God today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I, I'm, not, I'm not tooting our horns. I'm not tooting. I was, just, I was just obedient to God and say, okay, Lord, this is where I am. This is what you've got me. This is what I'll do. You know? And it just be, be, became exciting once people started changing. Now let me say that again. It began to get exciting when lives started to change. We were talking um, to Hank this, this week. And we were talking about the, the prayer rooms, the healing rooms, and, and prayer, and intercessory prayer. Just, just prayer. Just what's going on in the church in that area. And he made a statement and it really hit me because it, this is where it's at. When people start seeing miracles, lives begin to change. Situations begin, atmospheres break. It was said of Jesus that wherever he went, that something was going to happen. People, you read it, they either got set free, they got delivered, they got healed, their lives were changed. That same spirit lives in you. Wherever you go, something is going to happen. People's lives are going to change. They're going to be set free. They're going to be delivered. They're going to be healed. And like these healing rooms, when the masses start coming in and they begin to see healings in their lives where cancer's broken off of them or, or, or arthritis, the fingers begin to straighten up and they walk straight or their minds begin to get renewed because God touches their, their, their life. Whoa, that's the dinner bell. Lost and dying people will come. Hallelujah. Now, now we know signs, wonders, and miracles follow those who believe. And those aren't the things that, that always change people's lives. We saw it in the Bible. But you know what? Who doesn't like healing? Amen. Who doesn't like to see deliverance? Who wouldn't want to? I'm going to tell you one of the greatest things that ever happened to me one time. I was in a situation where I was on a prayer team and, and they, they, ch they chose a day a week to fast. And you had to write on, on this calendar what day you were going to fast that day. And everybody chose this day. And they had, the, old, the day they always had left was Sunday. Nobody wanted to fast on Sunday. Why? Because, you know, you go to church, then you go out to eat and blah, 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 blah. So I chose Sunday. Well, that particular Sunday, my wife must have forgot that I even signed up for fasting because she goes to Cracker Barrel and I'm like, hey kids, pass the syrup. Hey kids, give me the ketchup. Hey. I cast some more butter for my potato, please. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. 
Maybe none of you ever fasted. Hallelujah. <laughs> it ain't easy when you go to Cracker Barrel and you're on a fast. <laughs> Nonetheless, I was obedient to that, and it was it was challenging. But God, I don't know. He does. He he rewards obedience. Can I tell you that? So I was obedient to that, and and later that night we had service, and and. Uh, and we, we opened up the altars at the end. And, and uh, the, the, the church was pretty big at the time. I mean, we were just in the midst of revival. And you know, I don't know if we were in the heart of revival at that time. But a lot of those people that were there because of revival. And, and you know, my, my, my faith was strong. Hallelujah. Until the guy that came down the aisle with the crutches. Now I'm just going to be transparent with you. Are you ready? I mean, are you able to do? Are you able to deal with this? Okay. The guy with the question. I'm standing here at the altar like this, and I see him coming, and I'm like, <laughs> she has she has a cold. I can believe for that one. I, I saw her sniffling all service. <laughs> Sure enough, this young man came right to me. I don't know what he saw in me, because I'm going to tell you what, my faith wasn't there. Hello. I was like, okay, Lord, I'll just be obedient to what you've called me to do. And even in the process of all of that, I'm thinking, maybe he's just believing for finances or something. <laughs> Because I had an anointing on my life for finances. <laughs> Hallelujah. Only God knows what to do. He'd send him here because his bank account's a little bit low. <laughs> no. He looks at me and I said, so what, what, what are you believing for today? He said, I'm believing to walk without these canes. I'm like, Hallelujah. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Now, I prayed this never happened to any one of you, ever. But the truth is, that's how the enemy begins to lie to us. He begins to bring thoughts into our heads. He begins to say that we're not good enough. We're not qualified enough. We, we don't have what it takes. You've only been on the prayer team for a month and a half. You're weak. You fasted today. You know, where's your strength? Come on. And, and you know what? I said, you know what? I'm going to believe with you that, that you will not need these, these canes anymore. And we, we prayed. We came in the uh, prayer of agreement. We stood in faith together. And that young man dropped those canes at that, that altar and walked all the way back up the, the aisle. I tell you, only God. It was only God. But he loved me so much that he would use me. He loved him so much that he would heal him. And he, he, that just increased my faith like a skyrocket. And, and we had a table off to the side like over there that, that people would leave their stuff that they've been delivered of or set free of. You know, kind of like the healing rooms out in uh, Spokane with the, with the um, um, wheelchairs on the walls and stuff, you know, during John G. Lake's. Um, time and it may still be there I don't know but I haven't been there but uh, they, these, these laid on the table for months and months and months these, and it reminded me every time I came in God said you have the faith to heal you have the faith to believe for somebody else's this that or the other thing you have the faith I've given you that faith and that's what I believe for the healing rooms. And that's what I believe for each and every one of your hearts. That God would get, he's all, we, we learned last week that he's given you a measure of faith. Amen. Amen. But this is where it all changes because this thing right here gets all whacked out. We're born again. Spirit filled believers. Hallelujah. Washed clean by the blood of Christ. But our minds get in the way. We got to renew them. Right thinking proceeds right actions. 
Right thinking precedes right actions. See, there, there, there are two sources in this world that we live in. God and Satan. There's no in between. There's no gray. There's no gray area. So what Satan wants to try to do, he wants to try to bring this worry upon you and doubt and unbelief. And if he can do that, can I tell you what? If he, if he even gets a little bit in that door, he can gain access into your life. Now that doesn't mean Jesus can't come and wash it out and get it all cleaned out. But you know what? I prefer not to have to even go there. Hallelujah. So we never allow him to have a foothold. Ephesians 4.27 says, Nor give the place, any place to the devil. So we don't give him any place. Amen? How do we not give him any place? Well, we don't look at the things we're not supposed to be looking at. We don't go to the places we shouldn't be going to. We shouldn't listen to things we shouldn't be listening to. We sh Come on. Bottom line. If, if, your, if your internet is a source of trouble for you, Get rid of it. Hello? We have a saying. We've said it for years. Do whatever it takes. You want to be free? Do whatever it takes. You want to stay in bondage? Then don't do whatever it takes. Because Jesus will set you free. All you have to do is say, Lord, set me free. And then you've got some responsibilities. You've got some responsibilities. What happens when we're born again is sometimes what I like to call like an empty, we're empty minded. All right? We know that, that if, 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 if there's something in us and it's cleansed out and we do nothing with it in our spirit being, then the enemy can come back in seven times stronger than he ever was. It doesn't actually say that in our mind, but what our mind does, it, it, it doesn't ever, it stays where it actually always is. It doesn't ever change unless we renew it by this. If you're not in this every day, I'm not saying an hour every day, I'm just saying get in the Word every day. It'll begin to change the way that you think. A mind that hasn't been renewed with the Word will only give place to the devil. Will only give place to the devil. Romans 12. Turn with me there if you would, please. Are you getting anything out of this tonight? Listen, it is so important. I heard Kenneth Hagin say that this is probably the number one key for a new believer. I think it's the number one key for every believer. And not only when they first get saved, but every single day of their life. And I know that's what he meant too. But the truth is, we have to renew our minds. Romans 12, 1 and 2. New Living Translation, it says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Has God ever done anything for you guys? Come on. Come on. We celebrate that, don't we? He's done a lot for us. He wants to do more. See you the greater. Let him be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Verse 2. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Your thoughts determine your destiny. What you think will determine your destiny. And when you're able to take hold of your thought life, that's when your life will begin to change. Your life will change from the inside out. From the inside out. I remember when we, my wife and I, I had rededicated my life. She just got saved. Her whole family thought she went into a cult and got whacked out. Um, <laughs> they'd never seen anything like it because the power of God began to get a hold of her in my life and, and begin to change us. You know, we were, you know what? We, we were pretty bold in the world. Why wouldn't we bold, be bold for God? I remember her nieces and nephews said, Well, Aunt Fran, uh, you know, why you can't drink, you can't smoke, you can't do this, you can't do that anymore? And she said, Oh, no, honey, it's not that I, I can't do it. I don't want to do it. See, that's when we begin to get changed. We don't want to do the things that we used to do. 
That's the renewing of our minds. I don't have a desire to. You know, the, the, the debate on if you can drink, if you can't drink, blah, blah, blah. What would it ever do good to anybody anyway? Do you know what I'm saying? Jane, you've probably never seen it do anything good to anybody, have you? <laughs> you see all kinds of people all the time. It, 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 I mean, alcohol, I, oh yeah, whatever. You know, I'm not on that, on that rampage, but listen, you know what, it never did any good to me. I saw what it did for me. I don't need it anymore. Hallelujah. I don't need it in my life. I don't need this. I don't need that. All I need is Him. All I need is His Word to renew my mind. See, it's not the thoughts that, that come from the inside of a person that defile him. It's the thought that comes from the, or from the outside of a person. It's the inside of a person that defiles him. Yeah. It's the thing your mind dwells on. What are you dwelling on? Well, right now I'm dwelling on the Super Bowl, Jesus. <laughs> I'm teasing. I didn't hear that. <laughs> if you're going to say something, speak up. Come on now. <laughs> a lot of people are. Oh, I'm, I'm, I, you know, it's fun. But you know what? You guys wouldn't be here tonight if you didn't want to get your minds renewed. Yeah. Bottom line. Yeah. It's a choice. You know what I mean? You can't force somebody to renew their minds. You know? The super will be fun. It'll be tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? This is the most important thing, is to renew your minds. God wants us to have fun. He wants us to be able to cut up in church. He wants us, you know, listen, Jesus, everywhere I saw, he, yeah, he knew how to party. You know what I'm saying? He had fun. He enjoyed life. He was life. Amen? And when that's in me, then, then I am life. Hallelujah. From the inside out, Mark 7, Jesus began to share some parables and he began to tell them some, some stories about some things. But he makes this comment in verse 20 that, that is really unique. It says, it is what comes from inside that defiles you. It is what comes from the inside that defiles you. For from within... Out of a person's heart come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, uh, pride, and foolishness. All these vile things come from within. They are what defile you. Can I, can I tell you this? Divorce didn't happen overnight. It's a thought. What you think about is a seed. Now what you want to do with that seed is up to you. If you have a seed and you just throw it on this carpet and you never give it, add it any soil, any water, any sunlight, that seed will dry up and go away. But if you have a seed and you throw it into good soil... And you water it and you have the proper lighting, it will grow. See, something like divorce, pornography, um, alcoholism, drug addictions, all of those things, a homosexuality, they start with a seed. They start with a thought. And they begin to think. And what happens is it starts here. And what happens is they continue to entertain it and it drops into here. And when it drops into here, this is a soil. It's our heart. The word calls it the heart or the, or the spirit of man. This is what is going to live. I use this as an example, but this is what's going to live forever, eternally. Our spirit man is more alive than our body is. It's just that we don't see some of the angelic presence and the demonic presence and things like that. But it's all around us right now. 
And, and this part of you is going to live eternally, this, this spirit being. And what happens if the thought goes into here and drops down to here, then all of a sudden that seed gets in there and then you turn on the TV or you open up the magazine or the internet or listen, you left your house today and your wife got on you because you didn't do the dishes last night. Hello? That's none of you. Boy, you guys are all silent. You almost have dishwashers. But the truth is, you, you're leaving your house and you're like, man, my wife doesn't even appreciate me. I do the dishes all the time. I just forgot one little dish. Then you go to work and all of a sudden the secretary or somebody down the office and all of a sudden they're, oh, can I get you your coffee? Can I do this for you? Can I do that for you? And you're like, wow, I'm appreciated here. All of a sudden, that's a seed that begins to birth. And all of a sudden, the next day goes by. You know, maybe a week later, your wife on you about something. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But all of a sudden, you go to the workplace and you notice that you're receiving favor from this young lady or whatever. And all of a sudden, now it drops down into here. And all of a sudden you're giving it some soil to begin to grow. Then the next thing you know you're giving it a little water to drink. And then you know it's out in the open and the sunlight's on it and now it's developed. See the thought doesn't just, when you get a thought, that's why it said, it said, you begin, here's, here's what it says, we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. That seed of lust is a proud obstacle that keeps us from knowing who God really is. We know that God, does, He can't even look upon sin. He has to turn His face. And here we are entertaining it. And the next thing you know, all of a sudden that thing has grown, developed, and now you're just another one of the 50% the of the statistics that's in a divorce. Or whatever. And I'm just using that as, as, as an example. You understand what I'm saying? And that's how it happens. It's that easy. You get a little attention and it begins to, to manifest. And you begin to feed it. Well, you're feeding it the wrong thing. What we need to do is feed it the right thing, and that's the Word of God. Amen. And publicly say, you know, get thee behind me, Satan. Like Jesse, can I be like Jesse DePlantis? You whore Babylon. Come on. See, I don't know where we've gotten off. We, we, we don't get bold enough sometimes, you know. Why? Oh, because we like being nice. Thank you. I heard that. Yeah. And that's the truth. You know, but you know what? If you want to stand strong in your faith, you're going to have to get bold. Now, that doesn't mean you got to get mean. But you're going to have to get bold. Say, this is who I am. I love my wife. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I had to score some points back, so. <laughs> no. Which gets me to my next point as we, as we begin to close. Our hearts overflow into speech. Our hearts overflow into speech, into speaking. What's in a heart that comes out of a man's mouth? Because that's what he believes. Because that's what he's been thinking on. And you know what? Sometimes you've got you to trick the enemy. Even if you and your wife or you and your husband or, or this or that or whatever's going on, you just got to begin to speak those things that aren't as though they are. So the word says, begin to speak those things that aren't as though they really are taking place. I love my wife. I'm not, I'm. 
Help me out, man. I do love my wife. I'm just saying if that were you. That's probably a really good example, though, isn't it? If that were you, you just begin to say, I love my wife. My wife is beautiful. My wife is lovely. I, I, I love it when she makes me do the dishes. You know what I'm saying. You begin to speak those things that aren't as though they are. Because your heart overflows into speech. It begins to speak what's really in there. You know? Getting back to the NASCAR. You know they're NASCAR fans because that is in their heart. and It comes out. Hallelujah. Tomorrow you'll see the, uh, the uh, armchair quarterbacks. Because that's in their heart. It's going to come out. Every one of them can throw better than Peyton Manning. Yeah, I love Peyton Manning. Hallelujah. I love uh, Russell Wilson too. Hallelujah. It's not about that. It's about we begin to think that we are more than what we are. But the truth is this. Whatever's in here is what's going to come out. If there's pride in a man, that's going to come out. You'll see it. It won't be able to hold itself back. Luke 6, 45 says, A good person proceeds good things from the treasure of a good heart. And an evil person proceeds evil things from the treasure of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. I love it because sometimes I encounter people and they have no idea what I do. Uh, if you were to look at me, not the stereotype pastor, blah, 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 you know, so they, they just don't expect that. And I'll be talking to them and they'll be going on and on and they'll throw you the F-bomb and this and that. And, uh, and finally they'll come down to, yeah, so, you know, what, what do you do? I say, oh, I'm a pastor. <laughs> and they're like... Well golly, well, golly gee, it's a pretty fine day, isn't it? <laughs> and I, I know, you know what? Those things are between them and God. You know what I mean? I do appreciate them not saying those things in front of me, obviously. But, but the truth is, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks, if that's what's in it. If that's who you're around. Listen, those, you know, uh, for those that are in construction and in that type of field, man... It's, it's rough. You're dealing with a lot of stuff, a lot of things you hear all day long, you know? I remember years ago, I don't know if it's such a big, big deal today, but years ago when, when, when we were young and we just talked about this, some soap opera or something. Did you ever watch this soap opera? I'm like, no, I never saw I never watched soap operas. But you begin to see people that would watch those shows and they begin to talk like that. Or they would begin to think their husband was like that. Or if their husband wasn't even close to that, why don't I have a husband like that? You know? <laughs> Some make-believe dude, you know? I mean, but the truth is that's what they were taking in. This, this thing is a filter. It'll filter good in and it'll filter bad in also. It's up to you. You've got to make the choice what you're taking in. So, for out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. Words spoken out of the mouth establish the cornerstone of your life. That's a good quote. I like that. Words spoken out of your mouth establish the cornerstone of your life. Who you really are. Yeah. The cycle of life and death are tuned in by the words you speak. The cycle of life and death, they're tuned in by the, what you're speaking. I never did understand why people would be believing for healing. They'd be up in the prayer line, spend 20, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever, receiving prayer for healing. And they'd walk away and they, this, their friend would say, so, so uh, um, how do you feel? Well, I don't feel much better, but, you know, I, I believe I'm healed. Well, you don't have to lie, but the truth is this. Why don't you just say, well, I'm in the heel of the Lord, you know? Listen, our, our faith is, is not based on how we feel. Hello? It's not based on how we feel. It, it's not based on what it looks like. Praise God for that. We're all in a bad place. The truth is, 
if the prayer of faith has been prayed and we believe, then we receive. Hallelujah. Eventually we receive the harvest of the words that we speak. Eventually you will receive the harvest of the words you speak. Now that can be good or it can be bad. It's the choice that you speak. It's what you're speaking. Proverbs 18, 20, and 21 says wise words safely or set, I'm saying, sorry, wise words satisfy like a good meal. The right words bring satisfaction. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will realize the consequences. See, there's, there's great power in your tongue. Say, there's power in my tongue. Your tongue was, was created to be an instrument to create things. God spoke the world into existence. God spoke, let there be life, and there was light. That very same thing, we are in the image of him, of God. Those things, when we begin to speak them, they begin to create things. Hallelujah. I love this verse. It's in Psalms 45, 1. It says, Beautiful words stir up my heart. I will recite a lovely poem about the king, for my tongue is like the pen of a skillful poet. My tongue is like the pen of a skillful poet. Your tongue was designed to create. In that scripture lies the secret of fruitful success. The title of this message is Fruitful Success. Hallelujah. You know what our lives are about? Being fruitful. Let me say it again. Being fruitful. Are we producing fruit? Are we seeing fruitful things happen in our lives? I always wondered when we were believing for a building back home and I would see this church, and I didn't know too much about them, but all of a sudden I'd see this big building go up, and they'd be starting to, to build this big building. And my heart started getting like, well, why them? I know they're, you know, they're, they're casual about their beliefs. They're what we call seeker sensitive, or they're, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just being honest, and I think, why? And God said, for one, you're not to judge. And for another thing is, they must be producing fruit somewhere. Do you understand what I'm saying? Fruit. And time would tell, you know. But our objective here at Victory is to be fruit producers. Come on. Hallelujah. Is to produce fruit in our lives because the fruit that is produced out of us will be shown in a lost and dying world. Amen. They will know you by your fruits. Not buy your Jesus t-shirt. Although it may be cool. But the truth is, that's not how they're going to know you. They'll know you by the fruits of what you have produced. Listen, as we close, I just want to use this last scripture. Because this is a key. We've, I've given you all of these things. Okay, how do I do it? There, here's, the, here's the way to do this. Turn with me in your Bibles to John 12. Because we're fruit producers. And we've got to know how to produce the fruit and how to keep it. John 12, 49 and verse 50 also. But don't speak... Let me see. I think I, I've got this wrong. Let me turn to it in my Bible. John 12... John 12, it says, I don't speak on my own authority. This is Jesus speaking. The Father who sent me has commanded me what to say and how to say it. So in other words, Jesus being all man, all human, all flesh, he's fessing up here. He's saying, I didn't really know what to speak. So when, if I didn't know what to speak, the only way I could get the right directions was going to my father, and he would tell me how to say it. See, a lot of times, I don't know about you, but I've done, we just blurt things out of our mouth. 
But Jesus said here, I don't, I don't speak on my own authority. The Father who sent me has commanded me what to say and how to say it. Verse 50, and I know this commands lead to eternal life. So I say whatever the Father tells me to say. You want to know how to do it? You want to know how to renew your mind? You want to know how to speak the right things? That's it. Yeah. John 12, 49, and 50. You go before the Father, and you begin to speak. Lord, I don't know how to... You know, we go into a situation, maybe in your workplace, maybe, maybe your family, whatever. You know, you've got this thing going on with your son, your daughter, your husband, your wife. Your, this is life, right? We're doing life together? These are instructions for life. You don't know how to say it? That's okay. The Father does. All you do is say, Lord, I don't know what to say. I need you to speak on my behalf. Let the words that you want that person to hear come out of me to be your words. That's how you do it. Hallelujah. Amen. Renewed mind. Say, my mind's renewed. My mind's renewed. My speech is getting better every day. <laughs> I speak faith. I speak kindness. I operate in joy. People see fruits in my life. And that's a game changer. In Jesus' name. That's a game changer. People will say, I want what you have. Amen? Did you get anything out of it tonight? Let's give Jesus a round of applause because he's, he's the one. Thank you, Lord. You know, um, at the very front of my Bible, I have this. Um, and then right next to it, I have Renew Your Mind, Romans 12, 2. I have our thinking controls our life. <coughs> what you think decides what you believe. And what you believe decides how you act. And what you believe in how you act decides how you receive. Yeah. And what you receive decides how you live. You know, we know this, that not every thought we have is from God. And so to control and to renew our mind, we have to be able to discern what is God and what is not. Yeah. And what we, just like Pastor Tony said, what we look at and all those things are what puts those thoughts in. But your job is to discern what is God and what is not. And then to do what his word says. And to take every one of those thoughts captive that are not of God. Because let me tell you something. If every thought that you had was from God, he wouldn't tell you that you needed to cast some of them down. And so when those thoughts rise up and they're not of God, you have to cast them down. You have to say, shut up, Satan. Get behind me. You have to say, no, I'm not, I'm not listening to that. I'm not doing that. I'm not going there. Can I tell you what? The number one ministry of the Holy Spirit is conviction. That's right. He, he's the one who's going to lead you and guide you and convict you when you need to be convicted. Now, now, he, now let me just say, he doesn't condemn you. No. No, that's the world. Yeah. That's Satan. Yeah. But he will convict you. And it's your choice whether you're going to follow him or follow what God says. Amen. You know, we all make mistakes. There's not one of us in this room who's perfect and can, you know, say they've never made a mistake. But the truth is, we don't have to make the same mistake twice. Thank you, Jesus. We always say the greatest lesson from a mistake is learning not to do it again. <laughs> Amen? Yes. So we're going to get to the place where we recognize every lie of the enemy. And we're going to start casting them down. And we're going to tell them to shut up and get behind us. Amen? And you know, if you're struggling in that area, 
I want you to know we're here for you tonight. Amen. Because you know, sometimes things are easier said than done. Well, always pretty much. But you know, when one is weak, the other is strong. And we want you to know tonight that if you need prayer, if you're dealing with anything in your life, and I want you to know right now that this is a safe place. Thank you, Jesus. There is not one person in this room that will look at you and judge you. And if they do, we'll pray for them. <laughs> because there's freedom in Jesus. And he's here tonight to set you free of any stronghold Thank you, Lord. that you may be dealing with. No matter what it is. And you know what? We all face challenges. And I just want you to know right now that if you need someone to pray with you, that we want to pray with you. You know, I, years ago, and I don't even know who I shared this with the other day, went with, to Tampa when Ronnie Howard Brown first started his church, The River. He was still in the Sun Dome. And uh, I was sitting directly behind him on the second row next to Dr. Leon and Bridget, who are his friends. So, you know, and Pastor Tony and I have never been, we're front row. I'm front row with his, I was front row with his mom because I didn't want to see anybody behind me. Because <laughs> I wanted to get everything God had. But we've never been front row like guest kind of people. We've always just kind of sat wherever, you know. And I'm sitting on the front row right behind him, and he gets up and he says, if there's anybody in here right now who has a spirit of fear, God is here to deliver you. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's me. We had just started our business, and we had only been running it for two months. He had quit a job making $100,000 a year 20 years ago. And I was like, I didn't know how we were going to pay our bills. And the fear of finances was gripping me every day. I would wake up in the middle of the night with chest pains because we were in such debt. I didn't, I, I didn't know what we were going to do. And I decided I didn't care who was standing next to me or where I was sitting. If I was with every preacher in that church and they all had on their Sunday best, I was standing up and getting set free. Amen. And I stood up that day, and I got set totally free of fear. I wear a bracelet that says fearless. Because I, I'm telling you, God is my source. I know that. And he set me free that day. And you know what he said to me later? He said, Fran, the altar call you need the most is the hardest one to answer. I'm telling you tonight, if you want to leave here free from any strongholds, Anything that has been taking your thoughts captive, tonight is the night to receive your freedom. Right now. Amen. At the altars. Let's just move this and just come forward now. Altar team, if you're here, come forward and just come with us and pray. I'm telling you. And if you're in here tonight and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, now is the time to come and to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Maybe you're in here tonight. And you do know him, but you're not living for him the way you once did. Maybe you're backslidden and you've walked away. Tonight is your night to renew Thank you, Lord. that time and renew that relationship with him. Or maybe you're here tonight and you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Tonight is your night to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. We're here tonight to attach our faith to yours and to believe for anything you need. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. God is a great God, and he wants to see you free. Amen? We love you. We bless you. And we pray God's very best for your life. If, you're, if that's not you, I'm just going to ask you to intercede and pray for whoever does come. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory.
glory to your name. God is faithful. Spirit Amen. of freedom. Thank you, yes, Jesus. Lord. Glory to you. Have your way Shut in this place, Lord. Right now, God. Every stronghold. Yes. Every thought, Lord, captive right now. I just speak freedom over the people here tonight. That they'll not be concerned what people will think. Father, you know every heart in this place. You know every situation that we face. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Koshatama. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, for your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ, the anointed one. Lord, it's the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage and sickness and disease. We call forth heavy yokes to be broken tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Set the captives free. We speak healing and life, abundance, joy and peace and fruitfulness. We thank you, Lord, for your spirit. Father, I thank you, Lord, for each and every person that is a part of victory. I speak blessings over their lives, Lord. I speak blessings over this house. I speak blessings over, over their workplaces. I speak forth increased anointings upon the people's lives, God. As they go forth, Lord, that, that, that the anointing would just begin to flow from them, begin to drip from them, begin to fall off of them, Lord. Wherever they place their feet, Lord, that they would, that they would see signs, wonders, and miracles following them as they, as they went about their daily business and their work. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your spirit. Oh, it's so sweet, God. Oh, Lord, I speak forth a freedom in this house, Lord. A freedom, a liberty. A liberty. A liberty. A peace beyond all of our understanding. Your son Jesus is present in this place tonight. Lord, do your work upon your people. Touch the hearts of those that need touched. We rejoice with you tonight. We rejoice with, with what God is doing here at Victory. We thank you, Jesus. Now listen, as people have re are, are receiving prayer, if, if you need to to go just you can get up quietly and leave but if you want to stay in this presence you're welcome to do that